Sanbona Rivanga Rivaka. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in this week. Boo, boo, boo. Please do like, share, comment, subscribe, join the family. Um, so you might be wondering what are we talking about today? Today I want us to talk about why is it that the things you see in your dreams take time? Oh, sorry, they don't take time, but rather they never happen. You see maybe yourself getting a job, you see yourself entering in a relationship, you see yourself, um, you know, just living a better life than the life you're living right now, but you realize that, ah oh man, this, hey, sorry, <laughs> I almost choked into my own spit. <laughs> hey, somebody's gonna take this clip and say, hey, she has a dozy now. I almost choked into my spit. <laughs> Number one, uh, why is it that the things that you see in your dreams take time or just never happen? The first one that I have, you might be wondering why do I keep on saying take time, is because number one, it's a season factor, okay? Season factor meaning that it's not yet the season for that thing to happen. If we read the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number three, verse number one, it says, for everything there is a season, yes. So there's a season for you to get married. There's a season for you to start working. There's a season for you to get a promotion. There's a season for you to start having children. There's a season for you to basically have everything in life. So one of the reasons why it looks like the things that, are, that you are seeing in your dreams are not happening is because it's not yet the season. So we have to wait. So, so the season factor means that you have to wait until that season comes. Just like how before you can enjoy the peaches, that you find on the trees you have to wait for the season to be conducive for the trees to start bearing the fruit so there's no way that you're going to be standing there in winter i'm doing this because there's a peach tree right there outside so i'm busy looking at it as well and you cannot be like hey I'm, i want a peach and there's not yet the season for it so you have to be patient and also wait to see is this the season for this thing and then you know you can start getting worried unless you were in a season for example if you are married right that's the season for you to start having children so that's when you can start getting worried with why is it that i'm not bearing kids you can't be worrying about bearing kids before getting married that's not that's the wrong season to be worrying about childbearing okay so it's all about knowing is this the season for that thing and um if yes then now you then you will start start probing if this is the and i'm sure that this is the season for this thing to happen what are the things that are causing me not to you know bear fruit with with this thing that i've seen in my dreams let's get into number two number two now number two with number one they kind of like related right because number two would be the time factor okay so the first one was the season factor now this one is the the time factor i'm going to take you back to the book of ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 it says for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven let me try and check out a different translation it says um there is a season a time appointed okay for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven so there, there is a season then they within the season there is the time so sometimes you are seeing yourself getting married and now you're you are so stressed that ah this god you said i'm gonna get married you might be in the season that you should be getting married but question is is it the time yet you see so the reason why it seems as if like this these dreams don't happen is because there are two factors that you're not looking at which is seasons and time time which is found within the season so the time is actually dependent on the season so it might it can never be the time unless it's the season so for example it it's never okay the only time where i would give birth is when i am already nine months that's the time for me to give birth but for me to have been in that situation where i'm giving birth i should have been already in a season 
where I entered marriage. So now I can enter motherhood. So my motherhood is determined on the season of my marriage. So the time and the season are actually interlinked. I don't know if I've explained it properly, but you first have to check, am I in the season? And if you are in the season, am I in the time? Because this might be the season, but is it the allocated time where this thing should be happening? So that, that is, those are the two major factors that are actually making it seem as if like people's dreams are not coming to pass. Th there's a lot of waiting that they have to do. So you just need to ensure that you don't like wait over the period. Like your waiting is within the, 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 the time that the Lord said for you. You don't wait beyond. You don't become like the children of Israel who sat over 400 years in, 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 in Egypt. Okay, so let's get into number three. Number three uh, is actually going to be quite interesting. This is a scripture in the book of Isaiah. I say Isaiah 61. I'm not sure. Right now, as I'm sitting, I say Isaiah 61. The Holy Spirit is like, are you really sure this is Isaiah 61? So let me just quickly check it. As soon as Zion traveled. Isaiah what? Isaiah 66. Hey, I almost lied to you guys. Isaiah 66 verse, uh, verse 8 says, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such? Can a nation be born in one day? Then it says, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So what does this mean? It means that sometimes when the Lord is showing us certain things in our dreams, there has to be a travailing that we have to do. So just like how um, when a woman is giving, when she's going into labor, there's effort, there's an effort that she has to put in herself. In as much as there are people who are there to assist her to bring the baby into the world. But that transition from the baby moving from her stomach pass yeah, yes, through her well, from her stomach through yes. <laughs> she has to be the one pushing like eh, eh, eh. yes. So 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 that's what happens when we travel when you are birthing something in prayer this is where constant fastings constant prayings are, 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 are located where you are forever you are fasting you're praying you're fasting you're praying you are birthing this thing a lot of christians are are, are, are guilty of this they don't travail they don't birth anything this is why the scripture says who has heard such a thing? Can a nation be born in one day? It says, as soon, as soon as Zion travailed. As soon as Zion travailed. Meaning that there's a travailing that every individual has to go through for them to give birth to that promise that the Lord has given them. Okay? There's a travailing. There, there, there's a travailing that you have to do intense. You might be asking, what is to travail? Travailing is staying in prayer. Intense prayers. Intense fasting. Where you are telling yourself, I will not die like this. In the name of Jesus, I shall bring forth. I shall bring forth. I shall bring forth. I shall bring forth. And you are constantly praying these prayers. And before you know it, next thing, boom, the doors have opened. You know, there are some doors that are so that are so stubborn that unless you keep on pushing, they won't open. You can't just push once and when it doesn't uh, open, you then say, ah, maybe it's not yet time. Some of you just give up too easily. So as long as you have seen it in the spirit, you have authority over it and you can definitely give birth and you can push through prayers and fasting. Let's get into number four. Number four, uh, there is no midwife. Midwife would be the person who will bring that thing. You know, you, you, you know just how I, how I did the illustration that the one who is responsible from moving the baby from the womb close to, out, it's the mother. But the one who's going to pull the baby out, it's going to be the midwife. So many of you guys are in churches, you are serving under people who don't have the authority or the capacity to give birth to that thing that the Lord has placed inside of you. Right, so if the person does not have the ability or the capacity to bring forth the thing that you would be travailing, it means that it could die, number one. It could be born prematurely. Not prematurely, sorry. It could be born with like an ailment because it was not handled properly, okay? It was not, you know, sometimes um, you're pushing, you're pushing. Next, we've heard of stories where a nurse held a baby and then the baby slipped and fell and the baby died. 
So do you see how it's so vital that even the midwife, okay, me saying midwife, I don't mean like an actual midwife, but a person who has spiritual authority, a, a place where you'd be submitting, a man or a woman of God who the Lord has placed capacity inside of them to give birth to that thing that he has placed inside of you, okay? Because in this kingdom, we don't do things on our own. We need people to usher us into our new destinies. We need people to usher us into the new uh, dimension that the Lord has preserved or reserved for us. So some of you are just under the wrong covering. You are under a person who does not have that capacity to bring forth that uh, thing and you might be wondering so how then do i know um who is the right person who's going to uh bring forth that which the lord has placed inside of me the lord is the only one that can reveal it unto you to be honest the lord is the only one that can reveal it unto you the lord is the only one who can reveal it unto you and i say this with so much um i don't know like with too many exclamation marks the lord is the only one that can reveal it unto you like please seek the lord in prayer because this one can make you or break you if you submit in the wrong place don't submit in a church because it's famous or submit under a man of god because they are well known no submit because that's where the lord said you should be in that specific season and the lord has clearly stated that that's the individual that's going to bring forth the thing that he has placed inside of you so let's get into the last one number Last but not least, number five. Number five is quite simple. You have miscarried the destiny. Uh, so many of us have for for woo, for forfeited, forfeited. Sorry, many of us have forfeited the things that the Lord had placed inside of us because we met the wrong people. The enemy stole it from us. You were promised a job, and suddenly you witchcraft and all of that. So the, there's the reason why. That's the reason why you see things in your dreams and they don't come to pass they don't you receive prophecies they're not coming to pass because you have miscarried the thing i need you to know that a prophecy is nothing but a seed all right it's a seed that you have to keep on tendering day and night where you pray over the prophecy in the book of uh i don't know second timothy or first timothy first timothy actually this is where paul says timothy wage war with the prophecies were that were once given unto you Okay, so it's not enough to just receive a prophecy. If I've been told that you're going to get married, do you think the devil is just going to be like, oh, uh, she's going to get married. Oh, lovely. Let's watch and see. What? The devil's going to fight to ensure that thing does not come to pass. So this is why Paul even says, wage a war with the prophecies that you were once given to ensure that they come to pass. So the Lord is, and, and dreams are more like prophecy. It's the Lord giving you knowledge. It's the Lord giving you revelation that according to his plans, by this, by this time you must be getting married. You must get married to this person and, and, and. So those things, you, you, you fight for them through prayer. So that's the only way we ensure that we don't miscarry. And if you have miscarried the destiny, the Bible tells us in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28 that the Lord, no, not 28, mm. sorry. I think from verse 15, so it tells us that the Lord shall restore that the, that the, the years that have been, that have been stolen, that the, the years that the canker worm has eaten, that the locusts have eaten. So the Lord will restore that which that you lost. It even says that the enemy must repay seven times. So you see with God in as much as we lose things we don't really lose them forever there is a restoration that the lord brings our way so remember number one season number two time number three travailing number four midwife and number five definitely has to be you miscarried the destiny but because we serve a god that restores just because you have lost it doesn't mean that you will not regain it instead when you regain it it shall be seven times fold better than the one that you lost and the Lord shall restore the years that you have lost, the years that the enemy has stolen from you. So these are the reasons why your dreams are not coming to pass or the prophecies that you have received are not coming to pass. Don't lose hope. God is sure. The Bible says, let all men be liars and God be true. If God said a thing is so, it is like that. If he promised you something, he promised you it is like that. So never ever say the Lord lies or the Lord promised you something and he did not fulfill it. It was not him. It was definitely some other factors that were playing. Also, you 
because you did not have the knowledge this is why he also says my people perish because they lack knowledge so you lacking knowledge you forfeited something that he had freely given unto you because he says that the lord has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness so my name is joy thank you for watching i hope that you've learned something and you now know what to do and you know what to look out for and you know how what to do with your dreams pray travail fast um locate the right person who has the capacity to help you and yeah my name is joy i'll see you on the next video shalom